Here with IFA, we actually have several blood analysis machines, and those are actually on site machines. They go with us with every single rescue. We collect the blood, it's the first thing that we examine. Once we put the blood into the test tubes, we go ahead and we put it into the machine, and then it analyzes the blood in there and instantly it'll actually produce um, a lot of information. That helps our assessment for the general health of the animal. We're able to determine information such as general chemistry, electrolytes in the blood, we can find glucose levels. With a small amount of blood in a short time, we can actually determine if the animal is suffering from infection, dehydration, metabolic disorders, stress, organ dysfunction, and more. It is very helpful at the end. One of the tools that we have uh, to monitor condition and stress in our stranded animals is a simple heart rate monitor. And it's actually the same type of heart rate monitor that's used by runners, athletes. We can strap it around the animal's body just under the pectoral okay. flippers. Heart rate monitor's on. And then we're able to use the SenseView app on the phone, which connects and pairs uh, by Bluetooth with the actual heart rate monitor and allows us to view over our phones what the animal's heart rate is and continuously monitor without necessarily having to be hands-on. So it's less stressful for the animal um, and we're able to get that data as we go. Making sure that the heart rates are at that safe range um, helps us to determine uh, whether or not they're a good candidate for release. The normal heart rate for a dolphin is actually very similar to humans um, where we'd like to see it in the range of about 60 to 80 would be good. Seeing heart rates you know, above uh, 120 or so could be a sign of, of stress or underlying condition of shock in the animal and we would be able to take steps to treat that. For stranded dolphins, one of the new tools that we're trying to use in the field to help us better assess these animals is an ultrasound. What it is is essentially a non-invasive diagnostic tool that we can use to look at all their internal organs. We bring the dolphins into our trailer for assessment. So I'll take the ultrasound probe um, and place it on the side of the dolphin. So we just kind of go down along the lungs, up and down in a pattern, um, and then I can move on to the abdomen and, and we can get a look at their liver and their stomach, their intestines, their bladder, um, and the other abdominal organs. We can look for signs of pneumonia in their lungs. We can look for tumors internally. We can measure their blubber thickness to determine how healthy they are. I would say probably second trimester. That's her spine and her head. But we also get to look at it to diagnose pregnancy in, in dolphins that are stranded. So what we're looking at here is an ultrasound of a dolphin fetus. And you can actually watch the heart beat right here. So we use it to make sure that the fetuses are viable and that the moms and the unborn babies are doing okay and healthy enough for release. So in the aquatic environment, sound does travel much farther than light. So it is the sensory modality that dolphins and other marine mammals use much more than their vision in order to communicate and to navigate their surroundings. One of the things we're worried about is that they might be affected in the ocean by noise pollution that may actually damage their hearing. And so when dolphins strand, we use a test called the auditory evoked potential test that allows us to test for the hearing of these dolphins. This is a field setup jaw phone where the animal receives sounds and the bio amplifier actually emits sound to the animal and then these suction cups receive sound and it measures the brainwave response to the different frequencies of sound so we can get a, a wide range of how this animal hears across multiple frequencies. And by assessing that range we can tell if there's any evidence of hearing loss at all and make sure that we aren't releasing dolphins that may have profound hearing loss back into the ocean.
Once we've had a stranded dolphin, the best way for us to know once we release the dolphin, if the dolphin survives, is to attach a transmitter tag. And so we basically take this satellite tag here and we attach this to the dorsal fin. And that will stay on for anywhere from up to three weeks to six weeks. And then we're able to track the animal once we've released it. The tag basically sends messages up to the satellites and then we get real-time data every day. We're able to log into a website. It basically gives us a GPS location of where exactly the animal was at that time. Also, some of the tags do collect time depth information as well, so it allows us to know that they're properly diving and traveling in the manner that they're supposed to be traveling and basically behaving like a dolphin should behave. The satellite tag data, um, as well as the health assessment data, gives us a lot of valuable information and then it can help us inform future strategies for better development of care and help us to know if we're making the proper decisions when we're releasing these animals so we can give them the best chance of surviving.